I think the topic we are going to discuss um, definitely affects everybody. Um, who is going out tonight after this? Who is performing tonight after this somewhere? Okay, who owns a club here? Who manages an artist? Who is an artist? Do we have DJs in the building? We have DJs. Great. So I think uh, if we look at our screens, and I hope uh, it will go up uh, immediately, we've had a hashtag that said, Stop Arresting DJs. And um, there was various views about why is it that we are now feeling very sensitive because it's DJs being arrested? What about artists? And then there's another school of thought that says, how come nobody has been arrested? I have not seen a hashtag saying, stop arresting event managers. Is it that we guys are complying better than you? Is it that the rest of the industry is complying better? So um, in our panel today, we have representation from NEMA. We have representation from county government. We have representation from... Uh, people who run clubs and pubs. We have representation from uh, someone whose work, he's an architect actually, and uh, deals with sound acoustics like now where we are. Uh, I do not know where the black curtain is, the acoustics for this place, so we are not making any noise. But the beauty about this, nobody can arrest us because they are the ones who are here. Aman Amnagani. Okay. And Amani, thank you for coming. We have... Um, I can call him uh, someone who's actually gone through that experience, and we have DJK. So let me do the official introduction very quickly from uh, that direction. And uh, you have a mic? Great. Kindly introduce yourself. I think that's the best thing to do. Uh, so I go by the name of DJK. So I'm just here representing uh, DJs in general from based off of the stories that they've had, what they've been going through. Um, speaking to individuals who've been through this uh, and kind of just giving that voice because it needs to be there. Uh, my name is Julius Duo. Uh, I'm a board member of uh, Perak, which is a pub uh, entertainment restaurant association of Kenya. Uh, the owners of the businesses that are most of the time getting this into this noise issue. And... Uh the gentleman here is known to all of us. I come from Events World, so anytime we are doing an event, we need a NEMA license. Sir, kindly tell us your name and what exactly you do at NEMA. My name is Eric Deche, as you have put, correctly put it, from uh, NEMA, the National Environment Management Authority, uh, responsible for the uh, coordination and supervision for all matters related to environment in the country. And noise is one of them. Thank you. And next to him, we are in Nairobi County. He's from the county government. Sir, kindly tell us your name and what exactly you do for the county. Yeah, my name is uh, Lawrence Mwangi. I work for Nairobi City County. I'm an assistant director in charge of environment, monitoring, compliance, and enforcement. I do pollution control and uh, noise pollution. I handle it within the county. Uh, and that's very interesting when he talks about monitoring, sound control, because the next guy... His work is to ensure you can be able to limit that noise from escaping. So kindly, sir, tell us your name and exactly what you do. Hi. My name is Robert Otieno. I'm an architectural acoustician, an architect by training, uh, an acoustician by specialization. We basically design spaces that deal with sound. So we try and contain sound and also just try and better the quality of sound within a space. I work for Sound Creations, based in Westlands, yeah. And seated next to me, uh, I was busy asking you who is an artist, and I think he's not only uh, comes from the artist world, but he's also here as a patron who has experienced what he has experienced, so kindly tell us who you are and why you're here. Good evening. Uh, my name is uh, McKinley. I'm uh, the MD at uh, Nairobi Horns Project. So I'm, I'm there, I'm also a musician, I perform, and uh, at the same time, by virtue of being a band leader, I guess you 
do a lot of uh, organizing and sorting out stuff. So yes, we have been affected, you know, by this business. So my first question quickly, and I think this will go to either DJ Case or to you, sir. In the 90s, I used to run pubs. I ran a pub called Spiders. At some point, I was running a pub called uh, Tacos. Later, I went to run a pub, a uh, restaurant called Rangers. And during all that time, a period of seven years, we never had an issue of noise pollution. When did we start being sensitive to noise? Were we okay then? Now we are more sensitive. When did this start? Um, I think, personally, I think um, what's happened is it's only really over the last, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's only been maybe five, six years or maybe longer that NEMA has started making sure that, because end of the day, noise pollution is an issue. And um, it needs to be stressed that that does need to be regulated and it does need to be controlled and confined because people do have the right to sleep, to rest, to not have to deal with the mental strain of having that background noise, so to speak, around you at all times. And I think this only became an issue over the past few years because that's when um, our government has decided that we're going to look into this and we're going to ensure that, you know, our, our citizens are okay. And of course, since then, that's when it's arisen as an issue to the creative community as to how this has been done. Eric, is this true? Is, is, has there been a lot of complaints that necessitated this very strong uh, implementation or enforcement of the noise pollution uh, laws? Yes. Um, okay. Uh, if I may put uh, some timing on it, huh? the the noise and excessive vibration regulations were uh, developed in 2009. So for the last uh, uh, nine or so years now, those regulations have been in place, and uh, they have been implemented. Probably what you could say right now is that uh, maybe because of the uh, the current rates, right? Uh, it has it seemed like this is the time we are seeing this thing, but it has been there. It has been regulated for all those years, and uh, at one time or the other, of course, you, you, you enhance your regulations, and so probably that is what you're seeing today, but the regulations have been there. They've been implemented for the last nine, nine or so. Mr. Mwangi, we go to county government. Um, so, I want to put up a club let's say, in a residential area, what is the process? What should, what should I not do? What should I make sure is in place? And how is that being floated? How is that happening? Is it, is it, is it happening? Or, or guys are just ignoring you and doing their own things? How is that going on? For you to be able to do a club in a residential area, I think you just need to get uh, the necessary licenses or the liquor license and the single business permit. But uh, where the problem comes in is when we have noise pollution. Uh, we, don't have any, we don't have a problem with anybody uh, doing a club in a residential area, but when that club now becomes a nuisance to the people, that's where we come in. You realize that Nairobi is changing nowadays uh, with the issue of alcohol blue and all that. Initially, uh, most of the clubs used to be in commercial areas, but now we are seeing a change of event where most of these clubs are moving in to residential areas. We are seeing the population increase, the advance in uh, equipment, the urge of people to stay in open air spaces. Uh, more vibrant DJs are coming in. Uh, people want to party more. And uh, they are not able to contain this sound. So the issue really is containing the sound. If we have clubs in residential areas and uh, they are able to contain the noise, I think the county has no problem. So let's now talk about controlling this sound. Um, what should we do? Should we soundproof? Should we have limiters? Should we leave it to the DJ to re self-regulate? And if that is not being followed, and you conduct your surveillance and see that this club is not meeting the requirements, and you walk in, who should be arrested? Uh, when it comes to who is being arrested, different persons 
in the same establishment bear the liability for the offense of noise pollution. You find that the, the law is very clear. If you are found operating a device that is causing noise pollution, that is going to harm the health or the safety of the, the general population, you bear the responsibility. You find that the owner of the club or the person, the manager, the person who is in charge of that place is overseeing a, an offense. You're there, you're in charge, and this is happening, you also bear the responsibility. You find also the owner, this is your premises, and an illegality is happening within your premises, you also bear the responsibility. So it will depend with the circumstance and the situation. McKinley, do you have a question for him? Yes, I do. Uh, my question is, how do you define residential and how do you define commercial areas? Because I think the raids have been kind of all over the place. So in my head, I want to know which places will say are residential and which are not. I think these are very clearly defined, especially when you're coming up with any structure. I think the, the club owners will know because when they are getting permits, this is very uh, well uh, stipulated. You find that we have uh, residential areas, we have silent zones, for example, the CBD. We also have uh, mixed use, where we have both commercial and we also have uh, residential. And if you look at even at the law, all those areas have different uh, sound levels that are prescribed. Uh, Julius Tuo, you are a board member for Perak that brings together all pubs and uh, clubs together. Um, from the discussion, there is a feeling that you are not following the regulations in terms of one, in terms of construction and ensuring sound doesn't, you know, escape. Because I hear it's supposed to be 30 meters from source. Number two, you are not doing sound acoustics for this. And when the enforcers check in. You guys are missing in action, and the guy who gets arrested is the artist, is the DJ, or an MC for that matter. Uh, what uh, the regulators should uh, first do before they license us is, and, and, uh, and they do it, do you want to do this? These are the regulations that are supposed to follow. Once you follow them, you are licensed. Now, after licensing, you are told uh, when you don't comply, your license will be taken back. Now, the issue is sometimes, we com most of the time we comply, but there are these few days or few times in a year we don't comply. When uh, the regulators come, they come with all the, the might, the force of the, the law. Uh, the DJ has played music to... Uh, big um, I mean, uh, they are just disturbing the neighbors. Instead of uh, telling that the owner of that premises, please tone down the volume so that because you are now disturbing the, your neighbors, and uh, if you don't do that, we are going to, to do whatever it's supposed to do, then that is why you find that uh, most of the new businesses that are coming in, they don't self regulate because I have the money. And I can do whatever I want. But uh, as PERAC, we are trying to tell uh, the government that let us work with you so that in case there's non-compliance, we can be able to regulate our members to, to do what is supposed to be done. Because at the end of the day, everybody, this is supposed to be a win-win situation. The government gets it, its taxes, the owners they get their profits, the workers get their salaries. And, uh, and, uh, and the customers, they get what they, they came to do, to do. They get to get entertained. That is the most important thing. Um, Mr. Eric, and if somebody can put up the post that uh, our county governor, Mike Sonko, had posted, and he was very clear on who should be arrested should somebody then break the law of noise pollution. And he was very clear. He said it's about arresting you uh, as a club owner and not the DJ, or the patrons. But in these instances, uh, and I think it's them, I want them to answer this question, we've had situations where the patrons, or him, or anybody who was just standing has been arrested in the process. What happens? Uh, uh, before he answers, eh? okay. of course the liability is, is to the owner of the business. That is the person who's supposed to be arrested. Yes. So, before he or she is arrested, there should be ways of doing it. Today you find me breaking the law, you leave a notice. Tomorrow you find me breaking the law, you leave a notice. The third time you find me breaking the law, now the law has to take its course. 
But not the first time you find me breaking the law. You are all over me. Uh, pause it there. Is that true? You guys just randomly wake up, enter a truck, hit a club, arrest? No. And let me put it this way. In the, in the description that uh, my colleague gave, there is one person who was left out. And that is the citizen out there. He talked about the businessman, talked about the DJ, talked about the patron, but did not talk about the person who did not go there, who wants to sleep, right, and have peace. If you go back to the Constitution, it clearly states that it is your right to a clean and healthy environment. So we must have that in the back of our minds, that we must do all these things, whether business or whatever, but knowing that at the end of the day, everybody has a right to a clean and healthy environment, and that is what the authorities actually stand for. So, the people who are arrested, uh, say, for instance, a DJ in a facility would be arrested because he's the one who is producing the noise at that particular moment using a certain equipment. And so that person plus the equipment gets arrested because it forms part of the exhibit. Then... Um, so, part of the exhibit has to be the DJ equipment. The DJ equipment. Why are, you not plucking, why are you not plucking the speaker on the wall that belongs to the owner? Because the, 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 DJ, equipment, equip, the DJ equipment is just the, the player. Yeah, but you, you see... I'm trying to understand. So, why is it that you target the DJ equipment and not the entire system? Okay, when I talk about the DJ equipment, mm. probably it's, it's, it's a technical thing, but okay. plus the speakers... Because then the speakers should be able to produce the noise that you're talking about. Okay? So you may have the equipment, the, the, the right. discs, whatever it is, but if your speakers are small and they cannot produce that type of noise, then you know you probably will be within. And those, those are technical things. But mm -hmm. the equipment that the DJ uses plus the speaker's capacity, right, also form part of the, of the exhibit. Before somebody is arrested, normally the procedure is that uh, the facility is inspected probably before, given a notice so that you can reduce or contain your noise. And if that is, doesn't happen, then you realize that somebody gets arrested. So the arrests, uh, the arrests are not done randomly, that you just go to a facility and just pick it up there must be some co I mean, uh, communication, prior communication, before the arrest is done. Is that true? That all the raids that have happened, there has been prior communication, which you guys refuse to comply with? Personally, I've not had any com prior communication. Meaning, they came? They, they, should, be, they should be written so that so that we know that what, what's the procedure there. it's you know, call you know you if when you call somebody mm -hmm. when you call somebody that is voice to voice okay there is not recorded okay there should be a letter just like the way we are given the licenses that you're not you're not complying please abide by the law or okay. we will come to arrest you okay but they don't do that In, and if they do that we will know how to self regulate ourselves and that is why i'm telling the government one work with perak and you'll have your way easy, your, your, uh, your work will be easy because we will be able to self-regulate ourselves. Uh, Lawrence, Mwangi, is that true that you guys don't really follow that due process before then you go and enforce? Is that true? I, I think I want to echo what my friend here from NEMA has said. That uh, this one we do coordinated. It's uh, coordinated. And sometimes it is even targeted enforcement. Because uh, when we receive a complaint, in fact, some of these establishments, we don't know the employer. But once a complaint comes to us, now it becomes our business. We go and look at them. And uh, for your information, noise complaints are now ranking among the top most. With at least 12 complaints every day and over the weekends becoming too much. So once we receive the complaints, uh -huh. uh, there is a procedure that we visit the establishment, do an inspection and do a compliance notice that is given to the management and if the management refuses to receive it, we even pin it 
on the wall so that people can be able to come and see. So when we come back, it is about follow-up to, to come and see if there is that compliance. And that's when some of these arrests are affected. Can, Do, I, add, can I add something there? Uh, you can add that I ask yes, you this. Just, I have seen, I've seen the arrest of DJs, artists, maybe patrons. Does the noise pollution also affect places of worship? If yes, I haven't seen a single Pasi or an imam being frog marched to Central Police Station. Okay, um, this is what I was going to say. Thank you. At NEMA, for instance, we have an incident desk which receives complaints on a daily basis. What's the, ratio, what's the ratio of clubs, events, and places of worship? Because the key thing that is coming out, and when, when we say we are doing this, we are getting a lot of inboxes about places of worship. It's like you're a bit too lenient to them. It, all these cases are addressed. Depending on the frequency, if, of course, you get more uh, complaints from pubs and discos and all those things, then you will find the responses high in those areas. But if there is the, 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 the complaints are coming low from the other sectors, of course, the responses to those is also low. But I can tell you, we have worked with the churches, we have worked with the, with the mosques and the imams, and some of them are complying. Those that are not complying, enforcement is also taken unto them. Probably, mm -hmm. the ones that come out in the, in the open are the ones that, uh, that, that, that uh, DJ, DJ, uh, the DJs, entertainment... They are more loud in terms of complaining than the rest of the guys? Probably. <laughs> but there is no discrimination mm -hmm. okay. as to where the source of the noise comes from. Um, okay, let, let me go to McKinley and then I go to S quickly. Your question? Yes. So I have two questions, yeah? Uh, the first thing is, uh, these complaints you never get, is it, uh, are you, do you guys have like a public register? Is it information that you guys can share in public interest? Because, uh, I mean, can you actually tell me last week we had X number of complaints among these, this is the record of it. And then two, my other question is, supposing uh, the procedure for arrest is not followed, does that make the arrest unlawful? Uh, so, who is going to answer that? Is that... Maybe I can, uh, I can say something. Okay. Maybe first I would want to touch about the churches yes. and uh, places of worship. Yeah. It's only because that uh, they are not as vocal as the DJs. We have been having issues with the mosque and the churches, uh, including within the CBD. Look at uh, outside archives. We used to have so many preachers. We made sure we arrested all of them until nowadays there are no preachers <laughs> outside archives. We have had so many other cases which I cannot be able to mention now. About the documentation of that, uh, we, received, we received written complaints. Uh, that's why we have very strong cases in court. In fact, all the noise cases that I have had, I have not had any one of them dismissed because I've been able to gather evidence so well, uh, work with the Residents Association, including the notices, which are legal documents that have aided me to make very strong cases. Uh, the other one is about any unlawful arrest. If anything is unlawful, it is unlawful, and that makes it unlawful. So if you have, anybody has been arrested unlawfully, I think that one is still unlawful. Yes? Um, just to add uh, another question, because from the discussions we were having earlier, um, it, is very, uh, it, is, it, it has become clear, it wasn't before, that a body, like you said, a body of evidence is built up, that there's a case, it's not random, just we show up at a club, we arrest people. Um, so one, I think a good way forward is to obviously make that information, like we discussed, more available so that people can know, okay, these clubs have a pending investigation so that for DJs, for patrons, to make sure that they don't get caught in the crossfire, they avoid that place, which makes it easier for you guys to do your job because there is more pressure on these clubs to do that. That's one thing. Um, on the second scenario, um, obviously at clubs, people are drunk uh, or they're drinking. My question is, after you've built up this case, you have enough evidence to, to allude to the fact that this club has not been complying with the very much needed NEMA regulations. 
is doing a raid during the operation of the club the best way to do this? Is there not another way to go to this place to guarantee that no other people who aren't part of this, be it DJs, be it artists, be it patrons, are not caught in this crossfire to eliminate that part of the issue, to I make it directly between the club owners and you guys so that it's, it becomes more effective, so to speak. I think it becomes more effective because they need the evidence. Sorry, I'm just asking. Yeah, one, we need the evidence. And also we cannot uh, step back and, uh, and uh, let the illegality continue okay. and then come to solve it later. Okay. Yeah. Now, um, in a few minutes, I'll be throwing questions to the crowd and I hope we have mics. So if you want to ask a question, you will stand up you introduce yourself, say your full names and what you do, and then make it very brief. Okay? Don't, don't tell as a history, just dead bang into the question. Okay? Um, I'm sure you've addressed it, and for me, my key thing that I want to see more is civic awareness, where let's educate the public, the patrons. Today is a Friday. There are like 80 pubs, I think, are, are, are around Westlands, Maybe two of them are not compliant or are not following what you want, but I don't know. I am here with my girlfriend. I just walk in, and the next thing, bang, there is a raid, and you pick us. Naturally, and how many here are lawyers? Do you have lawyers? Naturally, a lawyer will react when they feel you are arresting someone wrongly. And what has happened, of course, is you've also frogmatched them into the lorry. Is it possible to create civic awareness? Maybe, I don't know, maybe use social media, maybe use your website. Have a way of saying Club X should not be operating, and therefore, please, all the patrons are requested not to attend. Is that something that you can promise us on Monday you can begin implementing? I wouldn't want to say that uh, there is a Club X that will say that it, we would not want it to operate. Unless there is a closure notice which is given by the Director General of NEMA. And if that is done, there is publication on the same. It is publicized. But what I would want to say is that um, for you to be in a club which is making noise, I think you would not have a problem unless you would want to interfere with the work which is going on. We are very specific on the people we target, this being the managers who are responsible for the, for the organization. We also look for the DJs and also for the owners. Unless on a very rare occasions where the people, the patrons who are drinking interfere with our work, that's the only time we are able to arrest them. And we don't even charge them with uh, noise pollution. We charge them with interfering. So I'm opening it to the floor, and uh, I saw somebody raise their hand. Okay, please tell us your name, who you are, who you represent, and then shoot your question. Hi, my name is Ella Nyerera. I'm a digital marketer and an artist generally. Yes, so my question would be to the architect. What can be put in place in terms of, I want to open a club. Is there a law or a regulation that can be put into place where you come in compulsorily, regardless of whether it's an open air or whatever, so that you can assist in, in advising that this is how it's supposed to happen. Because it's not fair for artists to come and perform, or DJs, or an MC, then you don't know that this establishment has an issue, then you get arrested. That doesn't make sense, you know. So is there a way that the architect can work in collaboration with everyone else so that there's that assurance. Yeah. If you pity Amulanga Wanyuma. Which means these guys have failed in their job. They, of course, it is, it, it is about them. It is not about anybody else. Okay. It is about them. Now, what, what we are trying to tell them is eh, uh, let them assist us by helping Perak to be as strong as possible so that all members, I mean, all, all, all people who want to, to start these businesses, they have to first start with the, the association so that when, they, when we allow them to get licensed, they, we already know that they have already complied. Okay. So, you see, it is, about, it, is about of, it, is about, it is the issue of self-regulation. If they don't assist us, then anybody who comes, opens up a business, 
-hmm. They will start saying uh, biashara za ba ni kelele tu kila wakati. And that is not what we want. We want the, we are making money for the government. We are making money for ourselves. We are employing people who are earning a living. In fact, right now as we talk, after the government, the the entertainment industry is the second highest employer in, in the country. Bwana Mwangi, we are the second highest employer. Yeah, I agree with you, and you provide a lot of job opportunities, yes. which we really appreciate. Yeah. But uh, what we are saying is that it's not all the clubs or the bars that we have problems with. It's only a few that are notorious. We have very big clubs that uh, some of them have soundproofed. Some others have mature crowd, they are quiet. People have come up with new technologies. We are now having sound, uh, we are having silent discos where people are enjoying their music necessarily, without necessarily affecting anybody else. So that makes soundproofing not a, a requirement. It's up to the management to make sure that they are able to contain. You find the best solution, be it silent disco, be it soundproofing. The issue is that the people out there need not to be disturbed by the music. So, guys... Silent disco exists. Why do you guys want noise? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Chris, good to see you. Yeah. Uh, my name is Simon Wainaina. I'm a talent manager representing Simo International. Yeah. You know, I think we're talking a bit ahead of ourselves. And I'll tell you why. Can you imagine playing a game of football and in the middle, they throw a rugby ball in the field? Growing up, I grew up in the Kilimani area which was strictly residential. City hall. County government. County government now today, right? The Department of Planning, yeah, has gone amok. Nairobi used to have zones. Residential zone, commercial zone. Now, the minute you give a commercial user in a residential zone, what do you expect? I need to make a return on my money. What do you expect? So I think we need to start rethinking. If we are going to run amok with how we plan our, our cities, and I can see it's already beginning to happen in, in counties, then we are going to have to find a way to live with each other. What he's saying is very simple. What exists right now cannot be demolished, so the acoustics, and, and I think I want you to speak, then them. So how do we treat these existing uh, entertainment venues acoustically? And can that be something that can be probably legislated to be put in law to ensure that, yes, you have a club in a residential area, we are not going to demolish, but you have to comply with ABCD. Is that something that can happen? I think when it comes to acoustics, it is very possible to do it. It's very possible to soundproof a club. It's very possible to soundproof a club in a residential area. But you just, be, you just have to be willing to spend a bit more. The owners comes to the, to the owners, to the owners of the, of the premises. You need to be willing to spend a bit more to make the residents comfortable, to make your patrons comfortable. So you're just not going to get away with having whatever club in whatever area. So it's something that can be done, and it's possible, yeah. Quickly, your name, what you do, and fire your question. Hi, my name is Shwaz, and, and I'm a DJ. Um, three things. First of all, when he talked about uh, the nature of arrests, he said they, they are club owners, they are managers and they are DJs. Most of the times, or if not every time, the DJ is arrested. He is in as the example. How then do they make a follow-up to get to the manager, to the club owner, when the DJ is already inside? How many times does it happen that the DJ is inside and immediately he's gone inside, the club goes on? Because that's something that happens. The DJ is arrested, He's taken to City Hall or where, where, wherever he's been taken to. But a few hours later, the same club where the raid has taken place comes back to operation. How many times is the DJ neglected by the owners of the club and charged by the city council as the lawbreaker, whereas the club that is in question 
still in operation a few weeks later. I think uh, Perak. Uh, I, I would want one to answer that. Uh, you find that you are in a bus- you you've gone to a business that is a low breaker today. Tomorrow you go to the same place, a low breaker. The third time, will you go back there? No. Then, as a you, you are DJ association, you should know which businesses that break the laws so that you don't go there. Because at the end of the day, what what they are telling us here is. Before I get arrested, the people on the ground, and uh, of obviously the DJ is there because he's the one who is making the noise. So before they arrest me, they have to arrest you. So if you're arrested today in my, in my pub, tomorrow another one is arrested in my pub. On the third time, the another one is, uh, is arrested in my pub. What, what does your association have to do? Make your association strong so that you can be able to tell your people, don't go to that pub you'll never get the services you pro- they provide. A quick question to Ndeche and Mwangi. Uh, I think he's drawing back at you that there is lack of information for all of us to know, and I think this is a word to use, blacklisted clubs or pubs that have been not complying with the laws. How should they know? How should I know? How are you coming out to actually relay that information? Uh, Chris, Yes. Excuse me, before he answers, mm-hmm. um, a few weeks ago, if not a few months ago, a few clubs were shut down uh, because guys were in those clubs and the media had made it clear guys are not supposed to be in those clubs and guys were arrested. So when they come up and say uh, they cannot be able to relay that information, how comes at that particular time uh, that information was given? How comes now when us guys are making noise, we can have such a public notice being issued on Facebook by the governor. Yet, you can list the 80 clubs or the 6 clubs that you think are notorious on Facebook for everyone to be able to, 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 to get to that. It's okay, simple. we get to your point quickly. Mm. Maybe to, to respond to what you have said. The clubs that were shut down, that was the final stage. They had come to a point whereby so many arrests had been done, it had been publicized, and it, it came to that. But there are these uh, first-time offenders whereby we have received complaints, we have given notices, and uh, now when we come to monitor, we find you working on that. It is really very hard. You know, in uh, Nairobi, we have so many DJs. It is very hard for us to be able to come and tell you this club, this club, this club, this club. It is up to the DJ being in the business. Once you go for a gig anywhere, you ask, do you have issues? Let the manager tell you, do you have issues? Do you have notices? If we have notices, how do we comply? Because when you are looking for business, you need to get to know if I'm going to do this business. Are we having issues with the business that I'm going to do here? Case, case wants to answer that, to answer you very fast. We've, he's just given you a potential solution. The medium is to post on Facebook. Can that be done? Can we do that? Yes, it can be done. So meaning you guys need to embrace the digital platforms more because that's what a lot of these guys consume. And in this digital platform, if you can start one that it's like a notice board. You see when you're in school, when, I don't know, it's a notice board that says, guys, please note this and this and this. And actually, it should even actually have the law and the, the details of noise pollution. And that's another thing even to you guys. Do you have a copy of the act? How many of you here have a copy of the act? How many? After arrest. And most of the time, that's what happened, okay? It's very important, as much as we are trying to hit these guys, to also read the law. Then read, and then post the same, and then, and that's what I'm asking. From Monday, and, and we are in a digital government, from Monday, can we have that where I can quickly go and see I am safe in this club? Is that a possibility? Okay, go, Makindi. Yes, uh, I think just to add on to what Keisa said, for me, uh, you guys, it has to be very clear that I am against noise pollution as a person. Okay? So we, we all agree that noise pollution is a crime, right? We're not disputing that. But then the basis of enforcement is not punishment. It's not victimization. It's actually to make sure that people are adhere to these rules. Because then everyone is happy, then I can earn my living and you guys can, you know, the people can sleep. Everyone is happy, right? But then, uh, the same thing I said earlier on, that you say that you have, uh, because let's be transparent here, that you have complaints, right? 
through whichever format that you get these complaints from. I am sure there's a record of these complaints, unless they're ad hoc. Why is it hard to access even like a simple database, even if you can't do like say a comprehensive thing, that you know, that these kind of complaints are out there that we can see online? I mean, I honestly don't want to get arrested. I would not go to that club to play. I will not go to that club. Is that something, because you have these records, is that something that can happen even immediately? Uh, what I would want to say is that there is no place we can tell you not to go, because maybe today they will comply, yesterday they were not compliant. We will not want to say that we are affecting anybody's business. In fact, it will be bad for their business if we come and say all oh, these clubs are, are not compliant. But we have clubs that are notorious, that I agree with you, uh, in such a platform, it brings out solutions whereby we can be able to highlight some of, uh, of these issues. But when it comes to complaint also, we are also looking at the complainants. We also like to uh, have that confidentiality, whereby we are also able to protect the person who co wants to complain. Let me ask a quick question there. I am starting a club. DJ Case has a better club than me. I just want to shut him down, so I call you, because I know I'm protected. You will go shutting down his club. Not really, because we also do our own investigations. Okay. We don't do malice, we also do measurements. And as I said, we build up evidence over time. Is, is this something that you as PERAC and county government and NEMA, actually the way you are seated, need to come together for this public information to be easily accessible by everyone? Is that something you want to work on together? Uh, one thing uh, I want you people to know is that the government is me and you. So it is, the, it is the right hand hmm. that beats the left hand. Okay. So if they don't work in harmony, of course there will be, there will be chaos. And what, uh, why we are here is to remove this chaos such that we as the owners of the businesses, we comply. The regulator has a very easy time doing his work and the, the workers, they, they, they get their salaries knowing that they are safe where they are working and the, the people who are getting entertained know that they are not going to be har harassed at any one given time. So it is the issue of us working with the government, not us working against the government or, or the government working against us. It is us working with the government. Okay. Dacha? I just wanted to add one thing here. Yes. That uh, the government, the authorities, the regulators, right, we are public institutions. So we are there created by the public on using public resources for the benefit of the public in general. So our responsibility is to ensure that the public gets value for its money. Because tomorrow, if uh, one uh, has their eardrums busted, uh, you have a kid who is not able to concentrate in schoolwork, right? Then we shall be failing the public. So our responsibility is to ensure that the public gets the value for the money that they put into the institutions to provide those services, okay? That is important. Mm -hmm. Number two, what we have been saying here is that we need to work together which is possible. And we are saying, uh, PERAC, the, I'm not sure if there's an association for the DJs, yep. right? We need to work together to see how all these issues can be managed, okay? And there is no given moment that an authority like ours will be used uh, to jeopardize businesses of other people. That is why I said that we have um, um, an incident management system that receives complaints and acts to those complaints. Action to the complaint does not mean going to close. It means investigating, getting clear information, so that by the time you take the step to close a facility, then you have enough evidence to do that. Right? So it is not like today, because you are, uh, Chris is operating his, uh, his facility and is doing better than yours, right. so you use me or you use the authorities to close him. 
No. You will we'll receive the complaint from you. We will investigate it. If we establish that, yes, what you're saying is true, then we talk to Chris and tell him, this is what we are seeing. This is the condition. Please adjust. If he doesn't, then we go to the next step. But there must be a procedure that is followed to reach that level. Okay. Yeah. Um, Catherine, if you can put up a post of one of the screenshots from a patron, Joe, who talked about um, DJs not listening because they feel they have to blast the music and they feel nothing for the patrons even, and at times they don't even want to comply. There's, a, there's something like that. So when that is coming up, and I like your explanation, and I hope you guys are listening again. I like what you explained. Sir, what is your question? I'd like to know how you people work. How do you work? Do you just sit in the office and wait for complaints? Do you inspect? Do you go around? Because you're the people who license. Someone will come and say, I want to open a pub. Then you just license, license them. Do you go to the actual place where they want to set up the business, assess it, and say, maybe five meters away or ten meters away, there are residential homes or there's a school or there's a hospital? Because I've done a number of installations and there are some places when you're installing, you almost laugh because this is a building. Five meters is residential homes. So I'm like, how do this? Because, I mean, you know the kind of system you're installing. You know the capacity, what it can do. And then the club guys are like, you just do. Of course, it's a job. You're, you're getting paid, so I'll do my job and install. But I'm feeling pity or mercy for the people who live there. So I'm seeing a scenario like you people are just in the office and then... The next thing, people are complaining, matatus are making noises, you just go there, it's like you're firefighting. The next issue is DJs, DJs are making noises or clubs, then you run there. So it's, for me, arresting DJs, quote-unquote, is like a lazy way, my opinion, a very lazy way of working. Very lazy. Is it really a lazy way of working, or is it we think we can break the law when we know we can get away with it? Before you answer, uh, you said you are sound. Uh, you, you install sound. You know, uh, even in your house, when you buy a home theater, a powerful home theater, that does not mean your neighbor is not going to sleep. You need to regulate. And as I said, the regulation of uh, noise pollution comes with the owner of the establishment. You can have that powerful sound system, but not necessarily make noise for your neighbors. So it is not a matter of what equipment you put. And also, when you are coming up with a club. There is the liquor committee. The sub-county liquor committee comprises of locals of that area. And there are the people who come and say that this place can have a club. And they say that not based on the equipments that are there, but the need for such a facility. But when you use your equipment longly to affect other people around, that's where the problems come in. We do need to work together, all of us. Because this is an issue, like we said at the beginning, affects all of us. Um, my, my one concern as a DJ is that I want to make sure that DJs, artists, patrons, we, it's, it, 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 it's clear that we are caught in a crossfire. Uh, we didn't touch too much on the legalities of the arrests, but there are a lot of reported irregularities, if I put it as diplomatic as possible, with how some of these raids are conducted. That's not me or anyone accusing government or NEMA of this, but it seems that there is a lack of regulation or law to protect the other side, so to speak. So we need to do more to make sure that people who are arrested and held accountable are the right people and that we all prosper. That's what we want. Julius, too, on behalf of Perak. Uh, on behalf of Perak, uh, it is uh, very clear. One, we have to work with the government. And secondly, uh, we have to self-regulate ourselves. The DJ's association, uh, Perak, and all those that are, uh, appertain to our business or, 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 or in our industry. We have to work together so that we don't want to be found to be breaking the law. We don't entertain those who break the law. That is 
if I, as Julius with my business, I break the law, okay. the law should take its course. But if we are able to work with the government and uh, we, we, we are able to self-regulate ourselves, mm. of course, the work will be very easy. You won't find this noise pollution. You won't find all these uh, putting businesses where they are not supposed to be. Because at the end of the day, it is, should be a win-win situation for everyone. Um, Perak are promising to self-regulate. What are you promising as NEMA? Okay. Um, as I said earlier, the authority is created for the interest of the public. Yes. So NEMA will work to ensure that the public is protected because that is our mandate. I just wanted to mention that uh, amongst us here, we have also my colleagues from the county of Nairobi who go out, the question is, to go out and do inspections. Yes, people go out for those inspections and will continue to do that. But we'd like to just stress those two things. One that our responsibility is to make sure that the environment is good for everybody. Clean and healthy environment that we stand for. Number two, we are ready to work with the different uh, partners, PERAC and the association of the DJs, and of course, the county government, right? To ensure that we not only just do the, the laws and the arrests and all those things, but to ensure that people actually comply, right? We have programs for compliance assistance. And so if institutions are willing to work so that we can comply or they can comply to ensure that the environment is good for everybody, we'll do that. But the inspections will go on, I can tell you, and uh, where necessary, uh, together with the county government, where necessary, and due process has been taken, arrests will have to happen. That is, uh, is, is, is the fact. But of course, like I said, those arrests will not be done just for the sake of arresting people, but the people will follow, I mean, the authorities will follow due diligence to ensure that those who are arrested are arrested because they have not followed the regulations. Thank you. Lawrence uh, Mwangi, on behalf of county government, what are you promising? One thing that we can start seeing that will make lessen the pain, because right now you can hear a lot of pain from these guys. Uh, I think uh, where we need to stress on is about awareness creation, about the duties of everybody who will be held liable. I'm amazed that uh, people don't know about this law. It is there in the public. You just need your smartphone. Look for the noise regulations 2009. You're able to get them so that we become uh, law-abiding. Uh, Perak, uh, you people put your house in order. Make sure that your members that are doing, not all the members. In fact, a majority, 80% are compliant. Those who are not compliant, try to bring them in. We work together. And I think uh, the Nairobi population is also becoming very aware and more complaints are coming. We reduce on this complaint. We have very good coexistence. Thank you. Uh, acoustics. <laughs> I think for me, I'd, uh, I'd uh, direct my comments to the guys in Perak. Advise your members before they put up a club to ensure that they're in compliance with all these noise regulations to make sure they're sound, they sufficiently soundproof to their businesses so that you don't have all these unnecessary arrests. And I think for, for also NEMA and the county government, educate, educate, educate. Any, some, someone who's coming for a, a liquor license, have you soundproofed your venue? Do you know these laws exist? You probably will get arrested. Not all these things. Let's, let's all be proactive. Let's not wait for it to happen and take advantage of the opportunity to get some few coins in our pocket. Yeah. On behalf of the creatives, McKinley. Okay, I think for me, uh, my first comment is to Nema and uh, the county council. Your, your enforcement is turning this thing into an extortion racket. And that's not going to address the noise problem we have in this town at all. No one wants to get arrested. No one wants to break the law. Uh, the laws are there to protect me as an artist and to protect 
whoever is at home. Uh, focus should be more on finding solutions, I think, uh, moving forward from this debate, uh, in that even we as uh, people who work in that sector, I, I mean, we, we all work in that sector. You people work in that. We do, it's a huge sector. It's not, it's not something illegal we're doing. Okay? You're not turning entertainment business into something illegal. You know, that's like selling drugs. Sell a bit, run and hide. That's not what we want. That's not how we want to work this out. We should have a better engagement, I think, with more stakeholders than just the clubs. Let's bring everyone together to a table. Let's see what way forward that helps all of us. Yeah. Gentlemen, let's give them a big round of applause. Thank you. My closing remarks is simple. I would like to thank Ongea for bringing this, uh, uh, this to us, uh, this panel. I think what's coming out here is that we need to learn the law. Right now in my phone, I have the law. Whoever wants, I can bullet it to him. Share it, read. It's very important. We need to work together. Nobody can work in isolation. It's critically important because what you consider to be entertainment is probably noise pollution to the next guy. And the people who are supposed to do this, uh, uh, implement these laws, need to start way back than waiting until the problem is happening and that's when you hit. Mm -hmm.